Hi, my name is Kate, and I welcome you to this Tarot Cafe for a reading on the energies around the new moon of um, May the 11th, 2021. The moon's coming in around uh, 1700 hours Greenwich Mean Time, which will put it around 1 p.m. my time, noon Eastern, and uh, from there you should be able to calculate uh, the time that corresponds to your local jurisdiction. I have chosen to do this reading on the Goddess Tarot deck by Chris Walter. And I'll have the details in the description box for those of you who like to uh, track down the decks. It has been around for quite a while. Um, I think it was like the second tarot deck that I ever bought. But it is still in print. And um, just a caveat, it's a deck that requires a bit of translation because the images don't immediately line up with the RWS images at a glance so when i'm editing the video for this i'm going to insert the rws images into it um, just so they're all working off the same page here now, new moons of course are about new beginnings and starting new projects the focus of a new moon is on growth and progression and learning and it's a good place for setting intentions to guide you in the next uh, few weeks this is going to be a three card draw. The first um, card will give us a sense of energy that is passing from us, so what we can let go of, what we can release, what no longer serves us. Um, the second card represents the um, central or dominant energy for this part of the moon cycle. And finally, the third card represents future energy. Now the uh, first card in this poll is Diana, the Roman goddess of the moon. Not unsurprisingly, um, this cor card corresponds with the moon card in the Rider Waite at Smith deck. In the symbolic language of the tarot, the moon refers to uh, the subconscious, the hidden, uh, the interior world. And the appearance of the moon card in a reading can be a flag for you to slow down and pay attention to your intuition and to attend to your dreams. These are the avenues by which the unconscious mind can speak to the conscious mind. In cross production, uh, we have that lobster-like thing that's coming out of the pool of emotional waters, making its way up the dark and difficult path between the dog and the wolf. Every time I look at that poem, it reminds me of the line that comes from the second coming of uh, Yeats poem and what rough beast it's our come round at last slouches towards Bethlehem to be born uh, by the way probably the only thing I remember from a 40 year old freshman English literature class but some things do stick I guess <laughs> when this type of moon energy dominates a lot of people feel that they're caught in sort of a half real half illusionary world of um, disorientation. It's like being chronically sleep deprived while locked into a hall of mirrors. Um, you feel a little bit confused. Something's not quite right, but you can't quite put your finger on it. Good news. This is a temporary condition and uh, where this card is in the past position, it reflects that we're moving away from that kind of energy and um, these feelings might be diminishing. Honoring moon energy allows us to step back essentially get out of our own way long enough to make let whatever's trying to surface from the unconscious mind to make its way out um, key here is to let your intuition come forth pay attention to your dreams and any thoughts and visions gut feelings that you're having um, your unconscious mind might be trying to sell you something that's really important um, so give it a space to to talk if you will uh, some quiet time, meditation is helpful, um, journaling and artistic expression is also another effective avenue to allow the subconscious mind to speak and be heard by the conscious mind because the conscious mind can be a bit of a bully and it kind of shuts down what's residing in the unconscious. Now the light of the moon 
and can reveal the presence of dormant or repressed issues that are coming to the surface. In the Rider Waite Smith illustration, which I will put in um, during the um, second card from this draw is Quan Yin. She is the Chinese goddess of mercy. Her name literally translates to one who hears the cries of the world. And she's a bodhisattva, which is an enlightened being um, that has declined the pleasures of a heavenly reward and until all beings are free from suffering and hurt and, and pain. Um, her willingness to sacrifice her own pleasures uh, for the greater good of all means she corresponds to the number 12 card of the major arcana, the hanged man. And this card represents the central energy in this reading. Feeling trapped, confined, limited, uncertain, lack of direction, needing release, letting go. All of these are words that we associate with the hanged man card. The presence of the hanged man card in a reading can indicate that you're on, in, a, in an unhappy situation. If you're feeling stuck or trapped or have a mental uh, frame of mind that is restricting you, um, sometimes your best tactic is to remember that you have the power to release yourself from this situation. Um, you can walk away from it, a la the Eight of Cups, or you can change your perspective on it. That's the hanged man approach. Step outside yourself and shift focus and look at your situation from a different angle. Stop trying to control things and just let them be. Allow that rough beast from the moon card to be born in spite of the fact that this can feel very uncomfortable um, during the process. Often things that are buried in the subconscious mind are painful. They're old hurts, broken, jagged parts of us that still pack an emotional wallop. And in order to cope with that kind of pain, you may have built a particular narrative that goes with that emotion. Now I am not suggesting for one second that your hurt isn't true or uh, that you've exaggerated or you've misrepresented an old hurt, quite the opposite. But the narrative that's coming forth might be from your four-year-old self. Uh, so when you have a chance to examine it as an adult, you might find that your perspective on it changes. Uh, it might allow you to let go of an old narrative that no longer serves you and it might give you the space that you need in order to heal those old hurts. Doesn't make your history change, but it may change your approach to your history. Kuan Yin, uh, the goddess of mercy and compassion, invites you to be mindful about the attitude you have towards yourself. What are the old scripts that you're carrying around that are outdated and no longer serve your best interests? And the third and final card in this reading is the Eight of Pentacles. The apprentice card. It's the card that speaks of mastering your craft through hard work, delicate gents, and uh, dedication. In a spiritual context, the Eight of Pentacles indicates that you're been building, trying not to trip over my tongue here, building your inner wisdom, your emotional and spiritual resilience through dedication to your path. Working steadily towards something can often result in a sense of uh, futility, a um, sense of boredom or discouragement. Why bother? You know, just the same old, same old, same old, same old. Don't give up. The work that you're putting in right now into your inner healing uh, may not show immediate results um, and it can be left with a sense that it doesn't make any difference to you or to your life. However, it is. Um, just not immediately apparent. The skills that you're currently mastering will help you in your future life. What comes from this vital work is not only in inner wisdom and a sense of self-confidence, knowing that you'll have the resources to deal with whatever uh, life throws your way. Um, the skills you're developing, and they are skills. It's not something that is natural talent. This is uh, a learned skill. Um, will stand you well later in life. 
and you'll come away from this experience not only with uh, a sense of connection to yourself and uh, whatever you define as define, but it also gives you a sense of pride and a sense of self-confidence that comes from achieving your ambitions. So to kind of do a summary on this reading, um, let me bring up all the cards at once here. Um, I really see this as being a reading that's about the interior world and um, shadow work and uh, inner healing and inner child work. Um, with any of these readings, it's about how I interpret the cards and what I see coming up. Um, but definitely, you know, a clue here would be the moon card, um, which is indicative of uh, the subconscious mind, the hidden, the, the uh, stuff that's under the surface. And then we come up with the uh, Kuan Yin, right? Mercy, compassion, and uh, self-understanding, right? Uh, treating yourself with mercy and compassion, I think is a very important part of this particular reading. And then uh, finally, the idea of the hard work, right? We don't like to think of spiritual work as being hard work, but it is. And uh, if you are in a place where you have things that are coming to the surface, it can be very difficult to maintain your focus. And I can only encourage you to, to keep going. And Journaling is, a, is very, very useful. Um, meditation is extremely useful. Um, but for the most part, you know, take care of yourself. So this finishes the tarot pull for the new moon, uh, May 11th, 2021. Our next scheduled reading will be the full moon on May the 26th. And this will be a uh, reading for the super blood moon. Not only is it a full moon, uh, not only is it a super moon because it's the closest point in its orbit around the earth, therefore it is larger and brighter in the sky, it's also a blood moon. Uh, that's right, it's a lunar eclipse, and which casts the moon into a reddish shade. Although you probably only see that reddish color if you're uh, along the Pacific coast. You might get some of it Pacific uh, coast of North America, um, Eastern Australia, New Zealand, the rest of us all just have to put up with a boring old uh, regular supermoon. Um, I'll see you then. And in the meanwhile, if you enjoyed this content or got something out of it, please like and subscribe to this channel if you're so inclined. And I hope you have a great two weeks. See you later. Bye-bye.